Sorry. Um, Thanks, Naomi, for recording. I just I forgot to hit that button. Uh, but uh, I guess we haven't really talked about our new business yet. But uh, I, mean, well, I guess that, that was new business. But uh, we'll kind of go through the agenda here. Um, but yeah, I think I think uh, after after next Monday, we'll kind of uh, uh, kind of re retouch base. So maybe at the next IST, I'll put it up as uh, old business for us to kind of uh, you know uh, follow up on, and then we'll kind of see what outcomes are after that, and then see how we can get some of these international students involved too. Uh, what we have to also realize is that um, I'm assuming that um, I guess I should ask this. Um, you know, if there's any anybody, uh, maybe Dell might be able to chime in. But are Rotor Actors as students uh, allowed to apply for global grant scholarships or for Rotary related scholarships as Rotor Actors now that they're technically uh, full members of Rotary? You know, because I know there's that stipulation with Rotary that you can't be a Rotary member to receive. Uh, yeah, the problem the the problem is uh, the global grants. For scholars or for graduate students. So yeah, but we have yeah we but we have Rotor actors that are graduate students as well, you know. So oh, if uh, we do, then, yeah, then yeah, we do. That's yeah, one the, that's one of the things I'm thinking about. If we get them involved in uh, in international programs, you know, they'd be a, that that's a great pool of candidates for uh, global scholarships. Yeah, so we're assuming that they are they are going to be eligible though, right? As Rotor actors. Yeah, as long as they're grad students and they're, you know, okay. as long as they're proposing, if they're, if they're proposing a graduate program in one of the areas of focus, they okay. can apply for a, for a, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I was just kind of wondering because, uh, you know, obviously with uh, Rotor, Rotor, uh, Rotarians, Rotary members, you know, trying to, you know, like we're not eligible to be, re be recipients of uh, oh, you know what? benefits, that you know? Could, that could actually be a problem. Yeah. We'll that's what I was to, wondering. We'll have, to, we'll have to check on that. Okay. That could be a that could be an eligibility problem, but definitely. Yeah, one more one more thing to follow up on. Well, well like I said, it's just something that if it comes up, we'll, we'll have to discuss it. But uh, yeah, okay, all right. Um, next, uh, I guess we'll kind of move forward from that topic. Uh, Mark, are you uh, are you interested in kind of giving a little update on our global grants? Um, yeah, you know what? Let me share my screen, and I'll kind of show you what what the situation is. Uh, I've I've sort of covered this in emails, but uh, so, looking at this chart, uh, I did a calculation last night, and with just what I have on this chart that I'm sharing in Google Docs, uh, we're at about 82% of participation by the clubs, which is really, really, really high. Uh, you know, I think the California clubs at best uh, do 50%. Uh, of clubs because they don't allocate it the same way we do, right? So our problem, uh, this is this is Argent's uh, Washington Schools project in Nepal, and you can see right now, uh, of course, Honolulu Sunset hasn't published their their global grant commitments yet, but where we are right now without Honolulu Sunsets. Uh, DDF, they Arjun has forty six thousand dollars of commitments, and that's including the cash, the DDF, and the Rotary Foundation contribution, right? So this column here, uh, this column, this is the Rotary Foundation's eighty percent match, and then the super project. You know, it has a lot of clubs participating, but unfortunately, they're relatively small, each one of them. And so he's got a total right now of $17,000. So, uh, you know, that one's pretty challenging. The, the uh, Papua New Guinea grant has $13,000 total. Uh, that's without Honolulu Sunset still. And then... Uh, you know, I was surprised, but the Thai grant actually has seventeen thousand dollars, partly because Honolulu Sunset came in with a big, uh, a big contribution. But they've already they've already submitted that project for authorization, so uh, so they're done. They're fully funded. the the uh, The Delhi grant we're withdrawing because we're going to uh, we're going to we're not withdrawing. So let, uh, 
I have to contact the clubs that have already committed to that grant and ask them if they're willing to move their money to a different grant in Delhi. But we're going to postpone the uh, cataract surgeries to uh, later to next year. And we're going to be looking at a project of uh, establishing another eye hospital. It, uh, uh, what's happening is that the district has established uh, a blood bank and it's in a large building. And so they're giving us two floors to establish another eye, cl uh, eye center in, uh, in the slums. So, so that'll be a new project. So if the Rotary Clubs are willing to switch over to that one, we have about $10,000 in funding. Uh, so then we're going to go to our Japanese uh, partner district and ask them uh, for additional funds. And, you know, I think I detailed in an email, you know, what the parameters are there. So, so that's the situation. And, uh, you know, <laughs> this is, you know, this is a glimpse of the future. We're dealing with a much more limited pool of funds and, uh, you know, we have big aspirations. So we got to figure out how to do the funding. So, so I'll stop screen sharing so we can talk to each other, but. Yeah. Hey, uh, thanks for, thanks for doing that, Mark. I really appreciate it. Uh, go ahead, Mark. Yeah, that's kind of a down and dirty presentation off the spreadsheet, but that's our situation. Well, um, you know, I asked Mark and I think I copied to uh, James and a few other people, you know, about you know, if any projects are short of funding, um, individual members of clubs can contribute through their clubs, right? Yes. Yeah. So we might just do another campaign saying, hey, we need some more money for this project. If there's any individual member who want to contribute, just go through your club and then contribute cash. Would that yeah. be feasible? Yeah. And so the thing is that, you know, I cannot go, I cannot do a, an email blast to all the members of the clubs, but we can definitely contact the, the club executives and ask them to, to make an appeal to their members to uh, help out these projects. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. And we can also do it with the, uh, with the individual island coordinators. Uh, coordination committees uh, and, you know, ask them to get involved and the uh, assistant governors. In fact, Mark, you you, you helped me with a, an individual donation from the Kan a member of the Kanyohi Club for the super project. Right, right, right. A couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. And we can also use our district, uh, if they need a tax letter, we can also use our District 5000 Foundation. So they can make a donation. And my grant last year, two, there are two members of my club who are very committed to international projects. And they actually gave uh, $5,000 to one of my projects in cash. And so the way they did it was they gave the money to the District 5000 Foundation, earmarked for my club and earmarked for that grant. And Mark Berryman knows exactly how to set up the tax letter and all of that. So they got their tax letter and we got their money. So yeah, it works like a charm. Very cool. Hey, I just wanted to add, um, you know, looking at the numbers, um, you know, with Arjun on the phone here too, it looks like if uh, the, the Nepal project is already, uh, you know, more or less fully funded and he could scale down a little bit to match that 46,000 uh, with a threshold of being 30,000 minimum, I think uh, with the Honolulu Sunset distribution and uh, the outside partners I have that we haven't added into at least to the Papua New Guinea project, but also to the super project, I think we'll be okay. I'm just roughly guesstimating the, the numbers, but I think, uh, you know, if Honolulu Sunset comes through and is able to distribute that Accordingly, to match that, I think we'll be okay. Honestly, Mark, um, you know, looking at about nine thousand times up by one point eight, adding in another four or five thousand dollars from outside uh, people in, I think it'll match that deficit between the super and the um, and the PNG projects. So I think we're okay. But I know we had also mentioned that uh, you know, we were going to reach out to other clubs 
and uh, ask for their um, at least their DDF allocation to get like uh, uh, you know a an okay from their their club leadership that uh, uh, perhaps like another club with more club cash could potentially um, you know use their DDF, assuming that the uh, you know the two clubs are okay with it. Uh, is that something that's still something that we should be kind of focusing on, assuming that we, there might still be a deficit with other projects? So we have to we have to figure out how we're going to uh, how we're going to do that. So Naomi is Naomi is uh, one of our uh, our Rotary Foundation Committee heroes, heroine. Uh, she's still calling up clubs, trying to get them to make commitments of cash so they can use their DDF. Uh, you know, the thing is, if they don't, if they're not interested, then the question is, in the past, we've said, okay, if we can find one of the, if we can find another club to provide the matching, then we can use their DDF. You know, so, you know, I did that, for example, last year with Couple A. Uh, so they gave me a bunch of DDF but I had to come up with matching. And that's why my two wealthy members of my club came in with their, with their $5,000 $5, contribution to match that DDF. But the, the, the question is, you know, can Honolulu Sunset or somebody else, you know, come in with cash to match that DDF? The other question is, can, could we use it without matching? Or do we have to roll it over into next year? And that's a policy question that that needs to be decided at the foundation committee meeting, you know. But yeah, you know, you know, my 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 view, of course, is do whatever it takes. But <laughs> and and honestly, you know, I, I I I'm at the point right now where if I'm willing to you know give cash to a certain project, I would actually rather give it to another club who's not really active and wanting to use it and like kind of use it as a jump start for them to get the juices flowing a little bit, right? You know, That's give 200 exactly. bucks, 500 bucks to a club right. that we haven't heard from in forever and get them in the process, right? <laughs> yeah, we're actually not talking about a huge amount of money because a lot of the clubs that, that don't want to use their their matching are, are, you know, in the $400 range. But the clubs on Kauai, uh, they have, in some cases, $1,000, which is a pretty significant you know that that's a pretty significant contribution. Not not to say that four hundred isn't because it is. <laughs> yep, to, totally totally understand. Um, but I, I guess you know I guess we'll see. Kind of uh, I'll talk it over with Arjun and uh, Paul Moroz, who uh, unfortunately can't make it tonight. He's in clinic, but uh, you know we'll talk it over and uh, we'll kind of see what the actual numbers are. And how much we actually need, and obviously try to minimize the amount that we're trying to strain uh, from. Uh, you know, it is kind of a strain, right? You know, it's kind of it's not. Um, you know, it's not kind of the intent of that initial DDF, right? The, the DDF is to get clubs to participate. And if uh, if but if, if need be, you know, like I said, I, I mean, I could even talk it over and see if, for example, I didn't. Did you know if Pau Hana um, has contributed or not? Pau Hana, no, I, I didn't check on the list. No, Arjun, Arjun was going to uh, see if Honolulu, you guys can put in the money for them. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Like, like clubs like that, right? You know, clubs that uh, uh, we have a relationship with or we help charter or something like that, I think would be kind of our first kind of step, right? And the next step would be to reach out, my, my, in my opinion, would be reach out clubs that we want to establish new relationships with. And, you know, I've always thought that it'd be kind of cool to have a um, an in, inter-district uh, sister club relationship with someone new, you know? Uh, you know, just kind of either another island or, you know, across the island. Uh, east, east. I was joking with uh, the Capitol Sunset. We should have a, a Sunset Club uh, game. You know, all the Sunset Clubs in the, on the island, including the Highness Sunset, we should all have our own little Sunset Club hangout. Maybe at, maybe the district uh, conference will do that. Sunset and Sunsetters only. You know, we're going to have our own Sunset view at, uh, at, at the Alani. You know, we all have our own little Sunset Club. But anyway, with that said, uh, I always thought that'd be kind of cool to kind of reach out to clubs we weren't normally um, in touch with and Kind of establish which is what Rotary is about, right? Um, but um, yeah, all right. Well, we're approaching the halfway mark. Uh, uh, just uh, wanted to briefly take a, a you know, a, seeing, a, seeing, assuming there's, is there any other discussion on this topic? I think, uh, Nami, go ahead. Hey, Mark, if some person wants to put in money for the matching cash portion, 
can they send it to Rotary, do a pledge and send it to Rotary Foundation so that they can get the Paul Harris points instead of sending it to the club, uh, to the district foundation? Yeah, because the foundation isn't matching it anyway. So, uh, so I think what the, what the, uh, uh, you know, that if they contribute to a global grant, it's not going to help their Paul Harris. It does. They get Paul Harris points. It, it does. Paul. It gets um, points. It, does. it gets and points, but, but it, it gets points, but it doesn't get uh, annual funds. Right, right. But it gets yeah. points. And so yeah, they can yeah, get yeah. at least the points. Well, the thing is, they still have to contribute to the club. So if the club submits the contribution, the club will get the points. And then they can assign it to anybody. Mm -hmm. yeah, they can just assign it back to the member who gave it. Yeah, they can just give it back to the person. Yeah. And I, isn't, isn't the hang up also with that, Mark, that if they do do the give it straight to TRF, uh, the, uh, um, they won't be able to, uh, it won't be considered club cash. So there won't be a match, but there also won't be a, uh, um, a DDF match with that, right? Because it won't be, uh, it won't come from the club side. There'll be a private donor but, on, on the global grant application, right? But the global, but the club can use it as a, as a cash match. Oh, I see. Or a okay. cash I got you. Right? Yeah. I got you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because for five thousand, you get a white hat too. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's absolutely right. Is, is the white hat five thousand? I thought it was ten thousand. No, five. five. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that's but that's in one year, right? That's five thousand in one year. Right. Gotcha. One of these days. <laughs> <laughs> when I die. <laughs> maybe maybe after the house. Maybe after we get a house or something. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll maybe I'll donate a bunch of money in cryptocurrency when that becomes uh, crazy. <laughs> you have some? <laughs> there was an article about that actually recently about uh, donating uh, nonprofits donating uh, donating to nonprofits to cryptocurrency. It's kind of an interesting way of getting out of the taxing for it actually. You know the you know the, the taxes. It's actually kind of an interesting concept. But uh, but anyway, moving forward uh, uh, on a, on another yes, side of the world. Rotary on the dark web. <laughs> I know, right? Hey, it's like it's like Robin Hood, right? You know, you know, as long as it's going for a good cause, right? <laughs> uh, but uh, but uh, you know, be glad to, said, uh, no, go ahead. Del, Del would be glad to take your non fungible tokens, you know, anytime. <laughs> I'm waiting for them to make a rotary coin. Actually, wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> No, seriously, with all the blockchain, you you know it's safe. You know it's uh, you know it's a uh, you know it's gonna, it's gonna pass the four way test, right? That would be an interesting concept for for the next uh, uh, probably you know five ten years from now. But it'd be an interesting concept, right? A rotary <laughs> cryptocurrency, right? That we use for grants. Hey, you know it's a concept, right? It's you know it's something that uh, you know and you know, but uh, but anyway, uh, with that with uh, with without uh, further kind of pressing other things, any other. Issues on this? Um, does everybody kind of understand? I know it's kind of a lot to follow with uh, what's going on with the grants. Uh, it's kind of like a language. You know, once you become fluent in the language, we kind of just spout off. And those of us that aren't really too fluent in the language kind of need some help. So please feel free to ask any questions you might have. Uh, we'll, we'll try our best to explain it. I'm still in the absorption stage. So I like all you guys are talking because I'm like, whoa, a lot of words, a lot of acronyms. <laughs> so I'm trying, though. I'm listening. <laughs> I might not say a lot, but I'm listening. I promise. That's great, right? I'm, 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 I'm telling you, you're going to be the next uh, district and national service chair here soon. So, speaking of, some time. Be some time. Be future Rotarians. Hey, nice. I love the mask. <laughs> so, so James uh, or or Naomi, um, if you need any help in you know, getting the clubs to commit, you know, those eighteen percent, you know, who didn't, who haven't committed just let us know and we may be able to help in in different ways mariko i think all the clubs on maui are in uh, oh really okay valley, oh that's great except except valley island which yeah, you know that's... doesn't have any money anyway so <laughs> okay okay so all the maui clubs are in that's wonderful yeah, thank yeah. you in one way or another <laughs> Actually, you know what? I saw Kahului wasn't participating. Is that something that was still going oh, on, Mark? 
Kahului is not. And uh, it's yeah, a lot of money, it, yeah, yeah. So their 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 DDF is kind of hanging out there. But uh, are you in touch with them, Mark? I am, and uh, okay. yeah, I mean they. I, you know, the, the Maui clubs for the most part have not been able to do a fundraiser for two years. And now, finally, Lahaina Sunrise has their trees back, their Christmas trees, and uh, Upcountry Maui is doing their their uh, golf club drop. But, you know, the other clubs that are used to, you know, to doing a dance and dinner event are up the tree. <laughs> So is Kahului saying that they don't have club cash? They don't have don't any know. money. Yeah, they don't have any money. Because How much they're are not... they talking about? Uh, it's not a huge amount. Uh, hang on. Okay. You know what? I can't screen share. Oh, yeah, I can. Um, you know what? Um, here we go. Kahului, seven, $742. Okay. Okay. You know, which when you do the matching is pretty significant, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that. <laughs> because, you know, there could be some individual member in that club who may be able to contribute. Yeah. Actually, uh, you know, uh, Frank Kihara has been, uh, he's a de retired dentist that comes with us to Nepal for, uh, for a long medical mission. And uh, he actually in the past has contributed quite a bit individually for their for the Nepal grant. So he just, you know, goes club cash. So I'll try to reach out to him also personally, but if you have any other people, uh, uh, Mariko, are you mind, uh, please go ahead too. Yeah, Frank's a, good, Frank's a good idea, James. Yeah, because he's not only capable, but willing probably. Okay, all right. Well, uh, you know, I'll just move forward with the next, uh, Topic here. Anybody? Any anything else? Any other longing questions or? Questions? But yeah, okay, great. So we'll reach out to um, uh, Mariko and uh, Naomi, and I'll just send a little text chain or email chain with Mark also, and then we'll try to reach out to some clubs as well, uh, Naomi. And please let me know if there's any clubs that uh, you think I should personally reach out to. I know that you sent some emails already, Naomi, to me, and uh, we'll follow up with those as well. Um, it looks like, uh, um, you know, I, 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 I could potentially find some uh, non-Rotarians who might be willing to support um, um, the Papua New Guinea project as well. Uh, and I'll just kind of find a way to channel that in through somebody. I actually would love to see, like I mentioned earlier, I would love to see that go to a random, uh, not random, but random to us, uh, uh, you know, Rotary Club that isn't um, known to be uh, involved in the international service projects, right? That, you know, that'd be kind of a, a fun, random way to get them involved in Rotary and maybe even make that connection with that club, right? So uh, that's one way of maybe even getting new members, right? So something I'll consider, but I'll, I'll definitely um, spend some time in looking through and seeing what the numbers are and see what we need first. I'll go through that. Thanks for sharing the, the, the intense looking spreadsheet, but I think it makes a lot of sense. I appreciate it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we, we, um, every year, every year we go, we go through, we can see a glimpse of the mind of Mark uh, Harvison. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, in the last couple of days, I've been, uh, I just got off a Zoom meeting with the, the Rotary Action Group for WASH. And uh, the topic of the meeting was uh, advocacy and partnerships. And one of the points that the presenters made, there was a, a specialist in uh, nonprofit uh, NGO advocacy from Emory University. And one of the points she made is that the best way to advocate for international programs is to show them. And I got to say, you know, uh, Arjun together with Rajiv Pokrel in, in Nepal, I mean, they are really feeding us what we need. Uh, videos of these projects in the hospitals and, you know, the, the, the handover ceremony for the, uh, the water project it was awesome. It's absolutely amazing. And I know that right now, uh, Marianne and Virgil are in Baliguan in the Philippines and they're visiting the island where the diesel project is going. It's just getting started. It's just starting up, and I know they will come back with photos and videos, you know, the, the project and, you know, the people there and the people were benefiting. And it's it's such a great 
you know, we can use those in PowerPoints and presentations, and it's it really brings the message home. Uh, the other meeting I was at was uh, on Tuesday. The uh, Rotary E Club for Internet for World Peace had uh, Helen Kalfas on. She's the district grants chair in uh, uh, District 5130 in California, and that's exactly you know she didn't have video; she had photographs of you know all the projects they've been doing over the last five or six years, and the the people in the in the Rotary Club of World Peace were just you know, they couldn't believe it. It was like, you know, seven or eight or projects worth close to a million dollars that were addressing, you know, blindness, uh, uh, people who are cr uh, crippled from post polio syndrome. You know, they, Helen actually specializes in a few areas. So blindness, uh, people suffering from the secondary effects of polio because they don't really fall under the polio plus category. Uh, that's more of a, you know, medical issue. And uh, <clears throat> so, you know, any, any information you can get on international projects, whether they're global grants or not, you know, send them my way because I'm, I'm working on PowerPoints now for the clubs. I have a presentation in Naomi's club on the 10th and uh, anything I can get for uh, videos, photographs, whatever, uh, bring them on. Uh, the 17th, right? Oh, 17th. Sorry, 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 sorry. But so that gives me a little more time to collect videos and, and photos. Right on. Uh, well, hey, just wanted to share some good news today. Um, I know Dell and Mark and Arjun are, and uh, Naomi are probably aware, but um, Sandy, too, I think was on the email, maybe. Um, yeah, I think Sandy was on the email chain. Um, uh, the Bhutan grant just finally, finally from last year, from the year before even, uh, almost two years uh, in the works, finally got approved. Um, and, uh, you know, we're uh, now in touch with the uh, VTT team leader, at, uh, you, know, you know, Scott McIntosh, the, the big, um, you know, world expert, and he's going to be uh, kind of organizing the trip. So we'll definitely more to follow. We're still trying to tie it in, hopefully with a trip, um, you know, uh, with us to go out there. Um, I stuck with Arjun. I think in January after the holidays, we're going to resume talks with uh, uh, with Durga and uh, see what uh, the next steps are for this Nepal uh, uh, Bhutan trip, and see kind of how we can um, how we can um, uh, you know schedule that um, you know alongside with other trips maybe planned for next year as well. So it, look, at, it's exciting. Uh, again, you know, I think the template's already made. You know, we already have our team set up, and hopefully the same people will be willing. If not, we could. Uh, scale up, scale down, and um, move left to right, you know, so I think we'll be okay. Uh, but yeah, move forward with the next uh, 15 minutes, hopefully a little bit less. Uh, I just put together little slides from uh, from some literature. It could be the boring part of the presentation. So uh, get your cup of coffee or, or alcohol beverage, or whatever you need right now to to, to absorb. But uh, let me just uh, try to share a screen here. And while you uh, do this that, is just something. While you do that, uh, mm -hmm. Brian is probably really happy because Brian wanted to go to Bhutan, right, Brian? So <laughs> yeah. much. So much <laughs> want to go to Bhutan. I've been waiting when I heard I Bhutan. I wouldn't mind going to Bhutan. <laughs> yeah, right on, right on. I'd and, like uh, to see Rajiv Pokhrel, though, in Nepal. Exactly. Meet them in person, right? That's super cool to meet people that you talk with in Zoom in person. Yeah. Hey, hey James. By the way, you know at yes. the Zone Institute they um, they they recognize districts that are exceeding, and so our district got number one for global grants. Hey, awesome, 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 awesome. <coughs> and let's keep Perfect. that trend. Continue. Exactly. Exactly. Well, let's uh, kind of move forward. This is a, this is just a like a literally just a little uh, review for 90, 80 percent of us, I would say, but. You know, it's, it's still good information just to kind of touch base, especially with the update that happened, uh, I think maybe just this past March or maybe last March. But, um, uh, you know, just more or less, there's some kind of hard guidelines for uh, these grants, uh, global grants specific, that's what we're going to talk about. Um, you know, you need about 30, you need a minimum of $30,000. It has to fit actually one of Rotary seven. Uh, I'll let that in a second. Seven areas of focus. Um, and um, uh, more or less, um, Kind of work with uh, strong communities um, and that's kind of the important part and i think that's one of the reasons why we have so much success in nepal because that strong community um, uh, commitment and also that uh, you know 
that uh, willingness to kind of, uh, you know, jump on Zoom calls, willingness to communicate with us, willingness to send amazing videos and photos afterwards, that really helps. It goes a long way. You know, it really helps invest, um, helps non rotarians understand what uh, we do too. Uh, but, um, you, know, you know, you definitely have to go through their portal. Um, you know, I, I was talking to uh, Rich Zegar and some of these guys about uh, what they had to do back in the day before, uh, before everything was email and digital. And, and uh, obviously we have it, it's, it's complicated now, but it's definitely as much easier than it was, uh, uh, you know, 20, 30 years ago. Um, but uh, definitely making sure, that, I think the biggest thing is this MOU, really having this document that makes sure that uh, the clubs and the, any partnering organizations really kind of come through and uh, commit. And uh, not only just with the finances, but also with the, uh, the reporting, uh, making sure that they're actually making those connect connections and those partnerships, but also when the project happens to make sure that, uh, uh, you know, the project's actually gonna happen in a timely manner. Um, and I'll, I'll share all these slides with you, uh, with you guys in the link as well after this. So don't feel free to, you know, just kind of uh, touch base. But ultimately, um, you know, this other idea between one country and another country is the idea. Uh, you know, there used to be this old term called a, um, you know, a, a reverse global grant where money was going from a developed country to a developed, uh, I mean, from a developing country to a developed country, and the, the developed country was being helped. But uh, that term is actually obviously uh, antiquated, but it's also uh, just um, you know you know not appropriate. There's many times where developed countries can have global grants uh, that other international countries can actually develop countries to jump in either. A lot of developing countries actually have uh, quite a bit of partners who have clubs that are pretty affluent that are willing to build these partnerships. And it's kind of an investment. You know, they, they invest in one of our projects for say in Hawaii and then uh, and we could actually provide uh, funding for their projects. It's kind of a two-way street. I think that's what Rotary built upon is the sharing between clubs and kind of moving forward um, together. Uh, but uh, again, uh, just make sure that these projects have measurable outcomes. I think that's sometimes a little, uh, um, hard, but sometimes many times it's easy. You know, um, you know, some people think it's, Kind of um, you know you you know as simple as we're providing medical equipment. How many uh, estimated patients? How many estimated people will this equipment help? Uh, how many physicians? How many uh, professionals can we train? Um, you know these are very quantifiable numbers that uh, it's not really that hard to come up with these numbers. Honestly, a lot of people kind of freak out when they kind of worry about these um, these measurements, but it's really not that um, difficult. And ultimately, as we mentioned earlier, you know. I mean, I'm sorry, not Rotarians. Actually, Rotarians do get involved with funding scholarships. Uh, we're not necessarily certain if we're Rotary actors, and obviously, we know that Rotarians cannot get involved, but uh, we definitely help. Uh, we have one that's actually wrapping up, uh, I believe, is uh, EU Lai. He's a, a Rotarian, no, sorry, a PhD doctorate candidate at University of Hawaii Manoa, who's funded by uh, the Rotary Club of Taipei East, I believe, one of the Rotary Clubs of Taipei that's uh, funding him to come. And uh, as the host club of the Rotary Club of Honolulu Sunset, we aren't financially obligated, but we're there to kind of be his host club in case he needs something, especially during COVID. You know, there's some concerns about whether or not he needs to go back. Um, you know, there's some concerns about where he would stay if classes were canceled. So there were some things that came up, but for the most part, um, the, the Rotary Club of Taipei provided all the funding and all the logistics for his behalf. So it's pretty easy, straightforward, but it is, a big amount of money, and uh, you know, you know, as you could probably allude uh, in here, that we definitely like the bang for the buck. You know, we definitely like to be uh, uh, frugal and uh, maximize our, our 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 dollar amount. So sometimes funding 50, 60 grand for a single student uh, when we could help an entire village of a thousand people, you kind of have to kind of uh, outweigh it. But you know, it kind of comes in terms of the development courses I've taken. You know, sometimes you have to raise that ceiling for that uh, floor, that basement to rise too. So some of these high value investments are definitely worth it if they could go back to the community and really inspire and really help. Um, so kind of keep that in mind as well. But uh, and again, qualifications, I think we mentioned this uh, before that uh, we, you know, every uh, Rotary Club is required to actually do a training um, at the district level uh, to kind of um, um, know their fiduciary kind of requirements uh, to make sure that they're being um, um, held accountable financially, but also know where their money's going as well. So not only signing the MOU, but also attending the training within our district. Um, you know, they're definitely, you know, in, uh, in, uh, in most clubs, it's usually the, uh, the foundation chair and also uh, uh, the president. I think 99% is always the president, but for the most part, you know, sometimes the, the foundation chair attends as well. Um, and then I, ultimately, this is kind of the, the, the last minute kind of checks that I like to kind of put in there. 
uh, you know, just make sure that, you know, both clubs are qualified. That was the biggest hang up right now with this uh, Bhutan club was that, uh, you know, they had an outstanding grant that the report was due. And that was the hang up. That was what we were waiting for. And finally, uh, the, 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 the TRS cadre, they were actually able to, um, the grants officer, I should say, was able to uh, convert that final report uh, and convert it to just an update report. So uh, there's definitely some leeway, especially with uh, COVID. Well, even before COVID, we had some issues with uh, grants kind of being delayed or whatnot. So sometimes these uh, final reports can be adjusted and there could be some leeway put in place. But it's really important to make sure that the updates are, or the updates and the reports are put into place because uh, that's what holds us accountable too. Uh, and that's usually the the host country is responsible for those um, um, you know reports and whatnot. Um, and ultimately, just also talking to um, any uh, partnering organizations that are uh, official partners. Those also need to be vetted through Rotary as official NGOs, and that just makes sense. I think most uh, uh, most 501c3s in the United States anyway are uh, are approved automatically, but uh, in other countries. The, the, the NGO process may not be as transparent. So it's just kind of important to make sure that uh, the partnering organizations are, 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 um, are cleared and vetted. Um, and this is an interesting term. Um, you know, I actually learned something about this. I, I, I learned that there is something called the draft status, but uh, I'm not sure if anybody here has kind of heard of this pending global grant status. But uh, um, yeah, it's something that's archaic to me, but I think it's something that maybe Maybe if we have a zillion uh, global grants, uh, maybe this is something we may want to use. But I think as of right now, you know, I think this might be at the higher levels when they're maybe talking with uh, maybe there's RI presidents or RI, uh, uh, you know, higher ups that are so maybe Mark, you got you want to add on to this? Uh, this basically the pending global grant status that basically is draft status. And gotcha. And the reason they're using pending is because it's a it's a budget concept. So when they publish available DDF, they show you the 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 grants that are earmarked, and they include the draft ones, and they call them pending global grants. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. Oh, so, yeah, it's it's a confusion oh, okay. on yeah. Gotcha. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. That's what it says at the end of the sentence here, right? At the end of the little paragraph, it says these grants applications are sought their early results stage. They have not received the financial goal. Nor complete applications. So they're kind of like the uh, the the uh, the foster kids that haven't really found a home yet that are waiting, and they haven't really been. Uh, they kind of take it out of the loop, but are still kind of there. Gotcha. I think I I think I saw one hang, hanger kind of in my uh, in my list from uh, Tanzania. I think from back in the day, from like four years ago, I think. <laughs> but uh, uh, but uh, okay. And then obviously the next level is this draft stage. This is when we get the global grant number. And uh, usually the first two numbers is the year which uh, kind of is anticipated for the project to start. So even though you started, even though you actually drafted the grant in 2021, and uh, the, but you write the start date to be in 2022, then the, the draft uh, number will be GG22, et cetera, X, Y, and Z, right? And then, so that's kind of how it starts. So some people actually ask, I think Adrian um, from uh, Wiking Key Vertical asked about that number, so you have to look it up. And it's actually when the, the project is slated to start, not necessarily when you actually started the number. So the, the numbers aren't really correlating to when you actually started the application per se. I think the last um, six numbers or so might be th that, but the first two numbers I believe are, um, are, uh, are and obviously the, we talked about, um, you know, it's, it'll be in draft status, but also be in, there's also a, a status called the submitted status. So what happens when a grant is submitted is when uh, pretty much every, all the things have been kind of uh, gone through the district level uh, all the checks and balances, and then they get submitted to the uh, TRF, and then TRF, uh, their cadre and experts go through it, and they send it back to you, put it back in a draft form to then uh, make those edits. And that's kind of, uh, I'm sure um, Dell is just happy that uh, he doesn't have to check all these emails coming from my Bhutan grant, because I think he got kicked back like four or five times uh, because of little things that need to get changed. But in the end, uh, you know, you know, nothing major, just uh, things that need to get changed here and there, different signatures, et cetera, that, uh, Going through, and it actually was my first uh, VPT, so it was kind of a good learning curve for me too. Uh, but uh, once things are approved, uh, then uh, money gets sent, and then once money gets sent, then the project happens, and then after that, the reports go into place. So um, that's always oh, is there it is. Sorry, I didn't. Uh, so here's the the next slide when submitted, and then uh, obviously under review and then approved. So so uh, once, and then ultimately at the very end, the paid status is the one that you really want to see. And then that's when uh, the money's been set from TRF, and that's when you can actually start uh, moving forward. 
And uh, this was kind of hard to read. Sorry, I don't know if you guys can zoom. Maybe I can zoom a little bit um, for for your behalf. Um, zoom in, I guess. Oh, maybe I could slide it now. But anyway, this is the kind of process here. I wanted to start at the top. So let me slide up a little bit. Um, so you have the application phase, the payment phase, and you have this reporting phase, right? Kind of three different phases. So obviously, this is the first part that we kind of go through uh, when we're kind of like writing the grants and. Um, you know, I have to have to I do have to kind of uh, mention Paul Moroz, who uh, is very famous for writing a lot of uh, really hardcore research and medical grants like your WHO to so these big, huge organizations. And um, so and trying to explain to him the grant process is much different <laughs> than, you know, it's not a it's not a grant per se that we're writing and then we get a lump sum money and here you go. It's actually quite different. We also are responsible for finding the money, too. Uh, in, in terms of like uh, reaching out to clubs and et cetera. So it's definitely a, a lot more work in my opinion than uh, writing a grant. Although the details that go into the grant might not be as um, as uh, you know specific, but at least the process here was uh, was, was pretty informative. So we ultimately just, uh, uh, you know, once the, you know, it doesn't, it, you do have to make sure that uh, the person receiving the, the amount of the money is actually able to receive the money. So you have to show that you have proof of an account. Um, and once that money is submitted, uh, once that proof of having the account is there after the application, so it's kind of weird, but it, it's I guess it's I guess in the past I'm I'm sure this is from lessons learned, where grants have been submitted, grants have been approved at the very end, the, the, the club isn't capable of financially accepting the money because for some reason their bank accounts are dis disarray or whatnot. So this is maybe something happened, but they definitely want to make sure that whoever's receiving the money can actually receive the money before they actually move forward, which you know it's understandable. And then after this is the kind of this area missing information is supplied to the staff. This is kind of the area where I was kind of stuck at a lot for the design grants, and then ultimately <laughs> moving forward, you know, and then and then um, and then once it's a view from second review or the third review or the fourth review, uh, then we get notification of the decision, and that's where it was exciting for us to finally get that approval decision. Let me slide this over just a little bit as possible, um, and then we're ultimately. Um, in this, uh, you know, the, the sponsors, you know, all the, all the clubs submit their money. Uh, luckily, with our uh, with our bank account uh, here in Honolulu, uh, a lot of the clubs had already submitted their funds, so that would, saves me a lot of time right now. So now that now I need to get the international clubs uh, to submit their money to TRF, and then from there, and the DDF as well. Once that money is sent over, I believe um, then that money is sent back to us to the club. Mark, um, in terms of, um, you know, since we have the account with us here, I didn't actually get too in depth with the Romania VTT grant, but the DDF would still go to TRF first, right? And then it would come back to us. It wouldn't go straight from DDF from our district to us, to the, to the, to the account here directly, the thing, right? The thing is that the, the, <clears throat> the, the contributing clubs never see the DDF because it's, it's at the Rotary Foundation and they just assign it to, you know, they collect all the money and then they send one large check, or in some cases a partial check, to the uh, whichever club is going to run the money. So usually it's uh, usually it's the host partner. Uh, I think all of our grants in Nepal, uh, they're running the money. Yep. So yeah. No, I, I, yep. Yeah. No, yeah. So it all comes lump sum from the, or, or in, 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 in certain cases, uh, in parts, right? But it comes, it comes all directly from the TRF, which yes. is a lot easier. Definitely direct. I like that process. Much, much easier. Um, and uh, just the next slides here. These are just uh, I'll, again. These are this is, this is for us to go over in person. This is just uh, more or less my uh, my what you call reference list, I guess. But this is a really cool PDF. It was from I think from I'm not sure which club specifically. I just literally just Google this. And this is an amazing set of videos and resources to have. And I think it'll be pretty cool um, for us in terms of, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, District and National Service Team and International Service Committee to actually uh, maybe even use this as a guide for us to kind of have some discussions in the future, you know, kind of like um, our own little International Service Academy, I guess you want to call it that. But um, these are just really cool. There's a lot of, lot of uh, um, you know, uh, questions can be answered actually through this. So I'll definitely send these slides out to you so you actually have these direct links. Some of them might be um, uh, outdated, but for the most part, you know, the, 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 the generic aspects of this are all there. They're all from the My Rotary page, so they definitely can help. But I think just having it like this instead of spending hours kind of surfing and navigating yourself, I think this can kind of help because it's a direct link. So, um, you know, it just kind of tells you kind of where um, and what to do. And I really like these uh, videos. It kind of shows you kind of what 
uh, you know, because they, they, they in terms of in terms of the amount of a club of a when a, a certain when a grant gets a certain amount, a Rotary International sends a team to do an audit and make sure that the money is being spent properly. And I actually was involved with one in Papua New Guinea for a big water project. It was really cool to see. And they sent uh, um, they sent this girl from Mexico um, who actually was part of an organization that actually does these audits on Rotary's behalf. They got a kind of subcontractor, and uh, she just specializes in water sanitation hygiene projects. And she was there for a week and uh, kind of went through the whole thing and asked a lot of questions and then kind of see what's happened. And then uh, ultimately it was just kind of a, a cool process. But I think these videos really outline that and actually kind of help them. They just show you the different kinds and obviously the different languages are there too. It's not like you have seven videos or six videos per, it's actually just six videos with di different languages to click. So it's not as crazy, but, uh, and ultimately uh, just, uh, yeah, I think that kind of helps. And I think, Mark has mentioned these uh, programs at scale, which is something fun to kind of look into, and also the disaster response grants. But I'm not going to go into those in detail. So I'll uh, the website where I found these are are through here. It's definitely another um, Rotary district, but um, just wanted to kind of end with that. Yeah, and I'll unshare here in a second. Um, and uh, wanted to just see if you guys any other questions and um, see if you guys had any other. Um, Anything to add for tonight? Oh, I just, you know, one quick thing before we uh, break up. Uh, a little bit more good news. My grant in, uh, in, in the Delhi slums was finally approved. And, and that was kind of a classic case of, uh, you know, how Zoom is affecting us. Uh, we met probably 15 times with the, uh, with the grant manager and the area focus manager. Uh, we had to make all kinds of compromises. At one point, my partner in India said, oh, you know, the grant manager is just looking for an excuse to deny the grant. But it turned out that she was actually working behind the scenes to help them get their grant in shape so that it could be approved. And uh, so we just got notification that it was approved after 22 months. <laughs> yeah. So so now so now the challenge is tracking down the clubs that are involved in getting them to put in their money. So uh, they're all going to say, I don't even remember that grant. <laughs> so anyway, it's all good news, though. Thanks. Well, hey, thanks for spending your Thursday night. I'm going to drive over to Kaimoki now to, to attend my uh, word. I mean, we're doing an offsite. Uh, Joint with uh, Diamond Head uh, Camo Key at Sacred Hearts. So hopefully, uh, I'm the Sergeant Arms. So I got to I got to run. <laughs> so, but anyway, <laughs> I'll, I'll see you guys. Uh, thanks again, and uh, we'll, we'll I'll let you know when the next meeting is, and I'll send the slides out in uh, in uh, in just to re reply all to the group. Thanks again. Awesome. Have a great night. Thanks again, everybody. Bye. Okay. Take care. Bye. Good night.